So you'll see here that we do have our rollover button and we also have our uh, rollover text. And this is basically anchor links. But what we want to do is we want to convert this to something a little bit more graphical with a hover and a rollover state. Create a new frame and this will control our styles. So we're actually going to just align this really quick for aesthetics and we're going to call this global. What we have to do simply is to just copy the layers that we want to use. So let's actually find uh, this button. Yeah, let's go ahead and copy this. We're going to need this anyways. So let's actually just call this BTN inside BTN. Now it's relevant, uh, the placement of your actual styles. In essence, we just need to take control of them. So inside BTN, let's say we have a label. And these will actually render as your CSS classes. And we have a background called BG. And what we need to do is go back to our elements. And we need to now reassign these styles to the elements themselves. Now, because we have an anchor, uh, what we want is an actual folder within. And this will be our button container. So let's call this uh, sign up. You could have any name. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a style to this. And to do this, you're going to have to have CSS with a pipe and style and the style names that we want to assign. So we've called this BTN, uh, but we could have multiple styles if it was also called blue, etc. So the next thing we're going to do is add a CSS style for the label. And we're going to add a CSS style for the background. Now what this will do is give us control in the output of the rendering with the style that we've created. So the next thing that we want to do is now that we have our button, uh, what we're simply going to do is we're going to copy this. Okay, so we have our single button and then we have our hover state. So what we're going to do is we're going to give this a CSS state of hover. And within hover, what we can now do is change uh, virtually any property. Deeper blue. And let's maybe make it bold. Copy this same logic with our link. So we're going to add this to the CSS style folder. Let's call this link default. Now, keep in mind, you have to use an underscore when you're adding space. Spaces and special characters all get converted to underscores in the output, as well to note that, in essence, everything will also be lowercase. So we're going to call this link. Let's give this a hover state also. So this is our default. This is our hover. And perhaps for hover, let's make this color a bit darker. Okay, so because we've created the styles for these, what we want to do now is for link default, we want to add this back as a style uh, for the layer. Okay, so now we have our rollover and hover state. You'll see that the background changed. It also gave a nice bold. We could have added a gradient or a drop shadow to this. Uh, it's completely up to you, as well as the text now changes uh, when you roll over. Now you can add any custom state uh, to, in, in essence, any element. It's completely up to you. But you can see we did this quickly and easily just with an extra global frame, our CSS styles folder. We defined our styles and our hover states. And we also added the styles to the actual element names themselves to ensure that they would render with the output. So you'll see very easily we were able to create hover states for our elements with Figma using Export Kit.